Welcome to Inside Leisure World, episode number 187. I'm your host, Joseph Chavez, and today our guests are Anne and Bill Frambach. Welcome, Anne. Welcome, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. So you had your 90th birthday recently? That's true. Yeah. I'm sure it was a great uh, event. I really enjoyed the party very, very much. Let's start off with uh, how d where did you come from and how did you get to Leisure World? Where did I come from? I was born in Patterson, New Jersey. I lived in my young years in various parts of New York State, New Jersey, Delaware, Washington, and Idaho. And uh, I came to California in, let's say, 47. Went to UCLA and met Anne there. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand you, you hit many places you lived in. You had a almost a record number of schools you've attended? That's right. I attended 33 elementary schools and four high schools. I've had to reconstruct my life a few times to, uh, for security clearances and to become an army officer and things like that, to become a lawyer. And the FBI asks the same questions over and over again. <laughs> and Anne, when did you enter Bill's life? Well, I was a student at UCLA, and I think we met at the co-op when we were having coffee between classes. Uh, at one time, he asked if I liked to drink beer, and I said yes occasionally. So he invited me to a, a fraternity party. A beer party. Yeah. A beer party, yes. Yeah. And for some reason or other, they, they couldn't have it. So we, he came and excused himself, said, uh, could we do something else? And we finally got to a movie together. We saw Red Shoes, <laughs> and that was our first date. <laughs> and I guess it sort of was habit forming after that. Yeah. Maybe nobody else asked me. <laughs> oh, <wonderful>. She <laughs> grabbed my heart right away. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> so uh, what kind of uh, uh, work experience or your background in uh, you were in the service, I suppose? I was in the service in World War II and in the Korean War. Uh, I turned 18 in, on November 2nd, 1942, and I enlisted promptly thereafter. And I was in wor World War II. I was never in combat, but I was there for uh, three and a half years. I joined the reserves at the end of World War II, and I was called back for the Korean War. You were married at this time? Yes. I was called back. Uh, we were married in 1950 in June, or no, July. July. Ju July 13th. And then two weeks later, I was called to active duty. Oh, my goodness. How'd you feel about that, Anne? Not very happy, but they seemed to think they needed him, so. I didn't like to go, I'll tell you that. <laughs> So while you were in the service, uh, what tours of duty did you do? Well, uh, in, wor in World War II, I just, I, I went to school after school. And uh, uh, did you know that I'm responsible for actually winning World War II for the victory? How's that? Well, I was never in combat, but I went to school after school. They trained me to this, that, and the other thing. And when I was finally ready to go, I had uh, my luggage packed my, and all marked for the overseas movement and so forth and the orders and the Germans heard I was coming and they quit. <laughs> <laughs> there's more, there's more. <laughs> because after that, we were, still, we were still at war with the Japanese. I was retrained. I was assigned to an outfit that was going to go to invade the mainland of Japan to go to the beachhead and stay there. And I supervised combat loading. I, ship in Bremerton, Washington, and was ready to go. The Japanese heard I was coming and they quit. <laughs> now, I don't get proper recognition for having won the war, but now you know the real story. Well, we're very grateful you, to you, and we hope that's a strategy that will be continued. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very good. Now, your younger days, uh, how did you uh, spend your time I understand you were into a radio. Oh, when I was in high school, I become very interested, became very interested in, in radio. And my friend Harry Keene and I bought the 
American Radio Relay League Handbook, which was a book about an inch and a half thick. And uh, we uh, studied that thing very carefully. We asked one another questions. We were, we were ready for our, our amateur license. We made a special arrangement to go to New York and take the test to become radio amateurs. The date it was set for was December 8th, 1941. Uh -oh. And something happened the day before. So immediately all of that stopped. Too bad. But, but we were ready. Good. Now, were you able to make a, a business venture out of this? Something about spare parts? Uh, you had an opportunity to... Uh, you fixed radios, didn't you? For well, I, I, I knew how to fix radios. Uh -huh. while, I, while I was in the service, uh, there was one place where I could had some free time, and I went to a radio shop in, in town, and I fixed radios. I got paid for fixing radios, made a little extra money that way. Great. Mm -hmm. But I was later trained much more, comp more complicated. I was trained to, to, uh, to build, maintain, operate large radio stations for propaganda purposes and that sort of thing, the Voice of America and so forth, and also to uh, cope with the electronics in in uh, uh, large airfields. So, uh, were you actually a radio amateur? No, never, never actually was legally. But Are after we speaking about piracy here, after uh, <laughs> December eighth, uh, Harry and I were seventeen-year-old boys <laughs> who thought, well, we'll just try these things out since we already built some radios for expecting to have our license. And we, we did do some transmitting, which we shouldn't have done. And then one time, uh, Mrs. Keene, that's Harry's mother, was in the grocery store, the kind of grocery store which has a clerk and a counter. And ahead of her was a man who asked, he said, I'd like to get my radio fixed. Do you know anybody who's an amateur person around here who could do it? And the clerk said, oh, go up to the the radio store. He said, no, I was looking for somebody, somebody, some amateur who might figure out, be able to do this, it'd be cheaper. So then the clerk, or Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Keene looked at me and I shook my head this way. So she said, no, I don't know anybody like that. <laughs> he covered so for you. She told Harry, Harry told me, and we put every bit of equipment that we could find, anything that looked like a radio, in a sealed place in, in my house. And then we, we just waited for them to come and catch us, and we were sure we were going to be either shot as spies or, or put in jail forever. And oh we, we just lived in great terror. And I, to my knowledge, this stuff is still where we stashed it. <laughs> wow. I understand also, while you were in the service, you became a recruiter of some sort. Well, that was when I was getting ready to be separated from the service after World War II. I was uh, uh, ordered to stay in the Army for an extra period of time and to deprocess enlisted men. Well, as I mentioned, I never was in combat myself, and I felt that those people who were deserved the best of information, and I did my best to read the, the, the material for this. And I was uh, went in, in Fort Dix, New Jersey. There's a large auditorium there, actually about the size of our amphitheater in Leisure World. Mm -hmm. It was full of soldiers, and so that I went through the various uh, things that they would be entitled to, to borrow money and to finance houses and to get 52, 52, 20 club, they call it, you get $20 a week for 52 weeks and things of that sort. And then I came to the part about the reserves and this whole room full of people Probably 2,500 people, they, men, they all said, oh, no. Oh, they didn't like that. <laughs> so I said, well, wait a minute, you got to stay here, you gotta, you, and you got to listen to me. I joined the reserves, and let me tell you why I did. So anyway, we went through the benefits of being in the reserves, and there were some benefits to it. And then uh, I did that every day for a period of time. And then it was my time to, uh, my time was coming up when I could stop that. 
and they called me down to headquarters at Fort Dix, and they, there was a general in charge and a whole bunch of colonels around. I, I was a little first lieutenant, and I saluted and all that sort of stuff, and the general said, well, it's all right, just sit down, son. Sorry. <laughs> we want to talk to you. So the gist of it was that they had been, uh, had almost no response to people joining the reserves like 1% or half a percent and so forth. So, And of the people that I was talking to, they had 15% oh, were fantastic. signing up. And uh, of course it was attributable to my being enthusiastic about it. Uh, so anyway, they wanted me to stay in the Army and continue to do that, be my patriotic duty to all that sort of stuff. And uh, I thank them very much and I appreciate the compliment, but no thank you, I had to go back to civilian life. <laughs> Left to Korea there. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Have, have you, uh, aside from your tours of duty overseas, I uh, uh, understand you traveled a lot. You had a uh, camper. You did bike trips. Oh, yeah. We traveled all around the uh, United States, not all, uh, the Western United States and Canada. We had a, a, a motorhome, actually, had two motorhomes, one after the other, which we enjoyed very much. But we got a little bit old and a little did bit Did drive that rig? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, I did. It was not a big one, so I, c I could handle it. We drove about 50% him, 50% I drove, except when we were on the mountain roads, and then it was stay to the right, stay to the right, stay to the left, stay to the left. <laughs> now it's your turn to drive. <laughs> what about bike trips. You also did bike trips, both of you? Yes, we took bicycle trips. We, we enjoyed riding bicycles very much. And uh, How far can you go on a bike? Uh, well, we used to ride 100 miles a week. Wow. And then we took some trips to uh, San Diego. We went several times to San Diego. Uh, but, but we broke that up into two uh, legs of about 40 miles and then another leg of roughly 30 miles. But we stayed in motels, but we would, it, so it took us th three days to get down there. And we enjoyed so that. But on the bicycle, you would carry your gear, your luggage on the bicycle? Well, that's all there was, yes. We had, we had bags, uh, what do they call them? Panniers. Couple panniers on the bicycles. So we, we carried what, everything we needed, but, but not food because we would just buy food. Yeah buy our lunches and dinners. Are you, are you still riding bikes or going on RVs or? I had to give up on the bicycle because I have balance problems now. Oh. And we gave up on the RV, our daughter has it now, because uh, we just weren't using it. We got busy with other things and slowing down. We are a little bit old. Well, speaking of busy things, I understand you, when you came to Leisure World, you, you joined a lot of clubs. Yes, and I'm still a member of lots of clubs. Yeah. Can you name some of them? And oh, let's see. The com I'm technically a member of the computer club still, but I haven't been to the meetings for a long time. But I'm in the, we're, we're both in the Y Service Club, which is a successor to the Wise Men. And let's see, in the theater club and the, the chorale. I sing for the theater club. I sing in the chorale. I, I sing for the, in the, uh, Odd Hook Chorus, which yeah, is... I've heard you sing, Bill. Beautiful, yes. And you're a member of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the Barbershop Singing Club. Uh, it's, it's a new kind of singing, which is new to me anyway, which is fun to do. It's challenging, but it's, the result is, is beautiful, not only to listen to, but to be part of it. <coughs> and speaking of his singing, understand that his 90th birthday, which is quite an event, did you permit this Mar Marilyn Monroe to serenade him? I what did. Was that I all did. About? She sang "Happy Birthday" to him. "Happy Birthday, Mr. Frombach." It was very impressive. Yeah. Everybody loved it. Yes. May I say who was Marilyn? Please. Yeah. Shirley Glauser. <laughs> no, not Shirley Glauser. Sally, Sally Glauser. Sally Glauser. Excuse oh. me, Sally. Oh. <laughs> Are you telling me now that it was not Marilyn Monroe? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't darn. have known. I've let the cat out of the bag. I would never have known. <laughs> Well, good for her. I'm <laughs> glad you enjoyed that. <laughs> she I enjoyed it very much. She's very cute. Mm -hmm. So this uh, 90th birthday party, uh, did your kids
kids set, set that up for you? That must have been quite an elaborate uh, production. Well, we, we handled the, the logistics of it, but, but yes, they, they did all of the, the, the programs and the entertainment and so forth, introduced themselves. And we're fortunate just all of our kids and all of our grandkids and grandkids, great grandkids with two exceptions were able to get to it. Wow, speaking of the kids, where, how many you have, where they come from, where are they? We have four kids of our own. They're all happily married now with nice families and nice kids of their own. And, and we have two great grandkids. And Do they we're, we're, visit you, you visit them? How does it go? Well, mostly we visit them. We thought that they would come and visit us, but it turns out <laughs> it doesn't work that way. But uh, they can't hide, we know where they live. <laughs> so we, we go to visit them. We keep in touch with them with uh, emails and that sort of stuff and the, the, the picture things you could do on the phone. Uh, what's it called, FaceTime? Mm -hmm. you, it's Is that like Facebook or FaceTime? Fa FaceTime. FaceTime. I, I, on your iPad. Well, yeah, we have an iPad and, and, a, and an iPhone. So depending upon where we are and what we're doing, we use one or the other. So you've, uh, you're not doing the RV travel anymore and the, the bikes uh, slow down. So are you going on cruises, other trips? We've been on a few, but uh, we live in a resort. I just uh -huh. <laughs> enjoy the living that's here. I, I'm active with the my friends, the things that are doing here. I, I have enjoyed the cruises we've taken, but I've also been bored on the cruises. So I, uh -huh. I, I like it, I like it here very much. Always good to come back home to Leisure World. Yeah. Great. We now have a daughter who comes to take, sort of take care of us, to check up on us every <laughs> couple of months. From, uh -huh. She comes from Utah. Utah. And she really whips us into shape, the things mm -hmm. we, think we're going to get done. She sees that we do. She makes appointments. She gets us there. Mm -hmm. And she has her eye on Leisure World. She kind of thinks she'd like to oh, live in this good. environment. We tell her it's a yeah. good place and she sees it is because she's here so often. Would she so. be considered a boomer or she's too young yet? Well, she's 56, so I think she, ah. or 57 going to be this year, I think. So, mm -hmm. I, I know. So, I think she's a boomer. Yeah. I'm not yeah. Now, Frombach, that's a, that's a German name, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, when the hostilities began, how did you feel about uh, that? It didn't bother me one way or the other. I mean, <laughs> I was clearly doing my very best to kill Germans, or what it would have done, that sort of thing. And interestingly enough, a gentleman <coughs> lived in Leisure World just across the sidewalk from us who was in the German army, and he and I... Uh, uh, discussed how we would have done our very best to kill one another 60 oh years earlier. Goodness. But we became very warm friends. Uh. And uh, we were the, in the same place. He was an Ober, Oberleutnant in the German army. Wow. Yeah. So. Uh, it's interesting. There are people from Leisure World from so many different countries and had so many different experiences. We've learned of a lot of them through this wonderful uh, club, hearing them being interviewed. Yeah, that's good. Very multicultural. Yes, it is. World. Yes. Yeah. I, <coughs> I can't lose track and I don't keep track of who is of what genetic background. These are my friends and I, I, I grew up as a little kid with all the prejudices that because they were taught by the society in which I lived and so forth. But uh, I've outgrown that. And uh, I, d I just don't remember. I can't. If you ask me about somebody's ethnic background, I have to maybe think about it and then maybe I can remember. But I, it just, it's not part of my, it's not, not an important part of my, my, my perspective. So you didn't go back to Europe to look at your roots or do a genealogical research or anything like that? I don't really care. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. You're assimilated. <laughs> well, I, I know that my, my grandmother was born in Wales. Uh, I have been told that my, the, the Frombachs were kicked out of Germany in uh, uh, 1850 or 52, I forget which, there was a big uprising there. 
Germany was not a country like we think of back in those days. It was like a bunch of city states. And I've, when I went to Germany after World War II, as after hostilities, I was still in the army, they sent me overseas. Uh, and I went through a town called Frombach, which was where they had come from. It's near Frankfurt on Main. And uh, uh, interestingly enough, the people there looked like me. <laughs> 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 so uh, it, it, that was my confirmation that that's where they had come from. But I'm told that they fled with their lives. They just got out alive and left everything. They were big shots back there. But what I don't know is whether they were the bad guys that the good guys caught up with or the good guys that the bad guys threw out. <laughs> so I, I hope it was the bet that they were the good guys, but I don't really know. Uh -huh. I can't tell. Well, speaking of geography, although you were in the service, I understand you had uh, faulty navigational and meteorological difficulties in your travels. Um, you once told somebody I think it was the Asunas that you were going to meet somewhere and you gave them false information unwittingly. Are we talking what about was, riding around the lake or what? Yeah, I think so. I think that was the case. Oh, we were at Lake Elsinore and the Asunas Where's that? were there. Huh? Elsinore. Lake Elsinore is in, in California. Okay. Um, anyway, so we were there and we, we were riding bicycles. They had their bicycles and we, we said, we're going to ride, we're going to ride with us. Where are you going to go? Well, around the lake. Well, how far is it? Well, I'd seen it on the maps, and I, th I, I th it looked to me like I can't remember the, what the number was. It was four miles or seven miles or something of that sort. Not too bad. And so anyway, they, uh, and Ann and I were in very good shape at that time, and the Asunas were kind of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we we started out, and it went on and on, and then very very quickly they were huffing and puffing, it was a hot day. And so we rested and we went on and on and on. How far are we going? go? Well, I don't know. We didn't have any map with us at that, at that time. Make a long story short, it was, it was something like 20 miles before oh. we got back. I, I can't remember the exact number. And they were just worn thin. <laughs> so they, they never really forgave us for that. Yeah, I would have a hard time forgiving you for that. <laughs> Yeah, but it wasn't months, on this mistake. <laughs> we did stop and eat food and have fun. They're, they're, they're wonderful people and uh, fun to be with. So uh, now that you've given up so many of those wonderful things, uh, what are you concentrating on now? I really like to sing. I like to sing. I, I, I sing at every opportunity. And I mentioned some of the clubs I belong to. And for my... 90th birthday, my daughter-in-law gave me a t-shirt which was inscribed that says, there's more to life than singing, <laughs> but not much. <laughs> so I enjoy that. That you speaks for me. You still do photographic work. I've seen some of your photographs in some of the clubs. Yeah, I do. I, well, what I'm do mostly doing now is uh, is taking identification pictures for the various clubs. And I put it out very similar to a high school yearbook with a picture and then the yeah. name of the people. And that way those club members can, can uh, know who they're talking to. They don't need to be shy and forget somebody's names. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I forget, I can't remember names of people I know very well. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to look at it and yeah. Read, oh yeah. Are that's you right, you're Joe Chavez, aren't you? Yes, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Are you volunteering that service? You do that ongoing basis? Or? I do that for, no, for nothing. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Can the audience know your email or how you can reach you? you know, I, I, well, it's, I'll give you my email address. It is wafrombach at aol.com. But I do it for the clubs that I belong to. Uh -huh. okay, yeah. I'm not offering to do it for the whole world. Okay. <laughs> That's good. So singing, photography, still travel. You want to travel. Well, as I said, I live in a resort here. And I, uh, I, I like to travel, but it, I just have so much fun here that yeah. I, uh, I don't, I don't have the urge that some people have to travel. 
you, you both have a car, or I understand you also have a, a no, golf cart? We, we're down to one car, and we have a golf cart. What do you use the golf cart for? To run around leisure, <laughs> leisure world. <laughs> it's it's street, street legal, but it, we don't have it registered. So, so we just drive it within, within leisure world. Uh -huh, yeah. So uh, how do you keep healthy? Uh, uh, some exercise, do you eat any special things? Well, unfortunately, I eat anything that's put in front of me. <laughs> I, I should eat special things. I should eat less. <laughs> I was a wrestler in college at 165 wow. pounds. But, uh, Fantastic. <laughs> I know I'm considerably heavier yeah, than that. Great. I wrestled in the Ivy League. I went to Rutgers for a year, uh, most of a year before the war, and then I, I uh, let me correct that. I was at Rutgers when I enlisted, and then I went into the service from there. Then I came back. After the service, I did a year in Rutgers, and then I moved to California, went to UCLA, where I met this lovely lady. Yeah. Could you give more detail on, and you've met in the... Uh, well, you, the story is, that his story is that we were in a big, a big class together. You know, they have some of these huge... Uh, class classrooms and you sit in alphabetical order and I guess the first day or so the professor was calling the roll and he heard the name Anne Holbrook and he remembered that he says the name of the ship that brought him back from England uh, after World War II was the Willard A. Holbrook so he looked around to see who it was and that's the first time he says he ever no noticed me I didn't see him at and here was that beautiful angel <laughs> with a pretty smile <laughs> At that time, I was much interested in another gentleman. Mm. That, that broke my heart. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it all came about. <laughs> we, we did meet. We graduated together. And the next year, we were married in 1950. So it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. So can you I'm thinking of keeping her for another week. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> I, he renews my, my credentials or something week by week. <laughs> So you can tell us something about your, your children, what they do? Uh, yes. Uh, the two boys are physicians. Uh, one is a retinal specialist and the other is an in internist. And our, our oldest daughter is a, is a lawyer and our youngest daughter is a clinical psychologist. They all have earned doctorates in helping professions. We're very pleased with that, but we would love them just as much if they were whatever their occupation I'm was. Sure you would, They're yeah. good human beings. Now, 90 years old, can you tell us how we can achieve that? 90 years old, that's really something. <laughs> well, they say you can live even to be 100 years old in a special way. You just drink a glass of water every morning, glass of warm water every morning for 100 years. <laughs> I thought it'd be more complicated than that. <laughs> well, just you, you make sure you, you do it the whole hundred. <laughs> Very good. And you want to add anything else? Well, we have um, one grandchild who has graduated from uh, graduated from Santa Cruz, and he's now um, serving the Peace Corps. He's in Micronesia, uh -huh. and he'll be there another couple of years, I guess. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you very much for coming, Anne and Bill Frombach. We enjoyed it. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having us.